Now in your health news, we know that midlife hits and so do the symptoms too. Fatigue, moodiness, even depression, more fat, less muscle, and also a decline in libido. Yes, these are symptoms that hit women, but did you know that the same symptoms can be experienced by men too as well? Well, the question is male menopause. Is it real or is it just a myth? Senior health correspondent Monica Robbins has the information that guys and their partners need to know. Okay, let's get straight to it. All women at some point in their lives go through menopause. Their reproductive hormones reduce to the point they become infertile and can no longer have children. As for men, that's not the case. Just because it doesn't happen as abruptly, right? There's not one time point where the switch turns off and you stop having testosterone. Uh, it happens kind of gradually as men age. Unlike women, men can still be fertile or may not notice any significant symptoms or changes at all. For that reason, we say women go through menopause. Men may experience a condition called andropause, or better yet, testosterone deficiency. Testosterone deficiency basically refers to a situation where a man's body is not producing enough testosterone for what his body needs. We checked in with two of Cleveland's top experts in the field for a question and answer session on the topic. Dr. Nanin Thiramavulavan, Chief of Male Reproductive and Sexual Health at University Hospitals, and Dr. Peter Bajic, Urologist and Assistant Professor of Urology at Cleveland Clinic Lerner College of Medicine. One reason for the nickname male menopause or manopause is that many of the symptoms are the same. Feeling sort of tired or sluggish is one of them. A decreased energy, a decreased sex drive or, or libido. You can notice some physical changes uh, like a decrease in sort of muscle mass or increased sort of fat mass. Treating a testosterone deficiency can be relatively easy. There are a host of treatments your physician can prescribe, from gels, injections, a pill for testosterone, a nasal spray, or even pellets injected right under the skin that dissolve over time. But, and this is a big but, Doctors first need to make sure that something else isn't to blame for the symptoms. If a man is experiencing these issues, there seems to be a tendency to look for an easy fix. But really, we need to get to the bottom of what the problem is. Diabetes, weight gain, and undiagnosed sleep apnea are just a few. Don't hide things. Uh, you can't get help unless you kind of know what's going on or your doctor knows what's going on. And even at a young age, we're seeing some medical problems crop up and we're able to treat them and make your quality of life better overall. And these days, you can't turn on the radio, TV, or open a magazine without seeing pills for a stronger libido advertised or erectile dysfunction medicine prescribed online. Here's the chief reason doctors say they're a bad idea. These direct-to-consumer services do not do as good of a job of getting to the root of what the problem is and performing those really important diagnostics to figure out maybe you do have underlying cardiovascular risk factors that could in a couple years lead to a heart attack. So it's important that men know this and that they not look for those easy fixes and really make sure you have a primary care doctor that's checking your overall health. And those doctors can't emphasize enough how important it is to rule out those more serious causes first. And both doctors specifically mentioned how common it is to see sleep as the root cause, especially for third shift workers such as firefighters or police officers. Because when your circadian rhythm is off, your testosterone level is actually going to be lower, Carmen. Okay, Monica, just a question for you. Aren't men more reluctant to see a doctor in these cases, especially when it comes to things like libido? I know that's a touchy subject, I'm, I'm sure, for some. Oh, absolutely. But the good news is they are seeing a shift among younger men who do seem to be more open and willing to seek help. But yeah, it is still a problem. And remember, there's nothing your doctor hasn't heard or seen before. And many men deal with this issue, and a lot of doctors also have virtual visits. That's also an option. Okay, Monica Robbins, a lot of useful information. Thank you so much.